Hey guys, this is Ian and welcome to this finally a brand new video for the channel. Uh, this time I'm going to be tackling the Joker, uh, but first of all I'd like to apologise for the lack of content that has been on the channel over June. I had to go away for a few weeks and had no access to uh, my computer or any drawing equipment really particularly at all. So yeah, I was unable to make anything for the channel for uh, the last few weeks, but hopefully, I well not hopefully, I am back now and I should be able to start getting some more regular content out to you guys. I know I seem to say that every video, but this time I really mean it. Maybe. But yes, in this video I am finally tackling the Joker. I say finally, I have actually done a painting of him before. It's one that I'm not overly happy with the overall result, uh, but I will leave a link to that one in the description down below so you can check it out if you want. It was one I did I think about two years ago, and I'm happy to be finally giving him another go. Now the Joker is one of my favourite characters, not just from the DC Universe, but I think across pretty much every franchise. He is, as far as I'm concerned, the ultimate villain. You would be really hard pressed to find somebody who is as calculating and villainous and just as creepy and outright nasty as the Joker is. Now obviously that's based entirely on which canon you're looking at, which version of the Joker you're, you're concentrating on. Obviously it's been interpreted in so many different ways over the years. Uh, you think there's very comedic stylings of Cesar Romero in the old 1960s TV series, and then you've got a much darker interpretation from, say, Heath Ledger in Batman The Dark Knight. But either way that you look at it, the guy is simply terrifying. So as with Harley Quinn, uh, my favourite interpretations of the Joker are from the uh, the original animated series and the Arkham series of games. Mark Hamill's Joker has always, always fired my imagination for the character and really that's where I wanted to get a lot of the inspiration for this one from. Another thing that I really wanted to bring in from the source material from the comics was the joke gas. It's only ever really made the odd appearance here and there in television and film. I think it was in the Tim Burton Batman film. I can't I can't remember. It's been a little while since I've seen it. Joke gas was always such an iconic thing for him in the comic book series. Uh, the, this gas that left you not only dead but with this horrific grin across your face as well. And some of the artwork in the original comics for, for people who have suffered this fate is really quite grotesque and a little bit disturbing in places. So I can I can kind of understand why maybe they've left it out of a lot of the more recent uh, adaptations and films, but it is something I would really like to see uh, it come back into the movies in the future, just simply because it is so iconic for the character to use this stuff. Uh, I, I kind of miss it in a weird kind of way. Another thing that I really wanted to include was the idea of Joker's Funland. It's uh, something which has come up occasionally, certainly in a few of the games and in, I, th I believe it came up in the comics here and there, uh, it was this theme park that the Joker had bought and turned into just this, this showcase of horrors. In fact, I know it came up in the comics because uh, obviously uh, in The Killing Joke is, uh, is one of the central locations. And there is something naturally unnerving about theme parks, theme park rides, the bright lights, the clowns, all those things when you put them together. There's, there's something which I don't know what it is but it, it instantly makes, puts people on edge. Or well, certainly I find that anyway. Like in the horror films where they have a group of small children singing Ring a Ring a Rosie. There's actually nothing sinister about it at all, but when you put it as an undertrack to a film, suddenly it becomes one of the most horrific songs ever written. And really, I guess it's the same kind of thing with Joker's Funland. There's nothing really sinister about a carnival until there is. So 
So onto the painting itself, I came up with the idea of having the Joker sitting on a throne, almost like the, the king or the monster at the centre of his lair, surrounded by his victims. I really liked the aesthetic of that. I also liked the idea of um, having it floodlit, like it was uh, he, he was waiting for you to arrive and then the lights just come on and you've got him just sat in his throne with the gun in his hand and the bodies strewn around the place. I really liked the idea of just having that kind of feel to it. But also bringing in the idea of this uh, carnival-like theme park idea, maybe that it's abandoned and uh, it kind of falling apart, so I put this kind of barrier in front of the wall. I know there's no real point in having a barrier up against a wall, but it looked about right to me. It gave the right feeling, the right atmosphere to the piece, so I'm not too worried that it doesn't exactly make sense. I had a pretty solid idea of where I was heading with the picture, uh, certainly where it came down to things like lighting and the different details and stuff I wanted to add. So very early on I was planning that kind of thing and trying to get it straight in my head how the lighting and things were going to look. So uh, positioning the sign, the neon letters and stuff around the place, uh, it took a little bit of time fiddling around. What I tend to find, and I'm sure it's true for everyone, is the more time that you spend in developing your line work uh, early on, the better that the final piece will be later on. Um, it's very easy at the beginning with your line work to adjust things, whereas if you've got right towards the end of the painting and you find that something isn't quite in the right place, it's much more difficult to adjust. So spending a lot more time on your line work is is very, very uh, beneficial for the final piece. Again, the same can be said for the local colour when you're putting in just the colours as they are flat, without any lighting or shadows. The more time that you can spend on that, uh, on that local colour and really think about the different textures and the different um, things which might be applied to that surface like maybe mud on stone uh, the better uh, again if you look at the the stones around the foot of the um, Joker's chair I'm not just painting them gray because they're stone stone is gray but I'm putting other variations of colors in there you will very rarely find a stone which is just one solid color uh, the same with brick wall in the background I've really tried to experiment with a few different techniques to try and get lots of different color variation gradients going on I've gone into individual bricks themselves and changed up the colors so there's lots of things going on uh, within that section even though there's not a lot there there's still a lot of detail just simply because I've planned it out in the earlier stages of the painting. Then as your painting progresses you can start adding the different uh, depth layers, the, the shadows and the lightings and stuff and again concentrate on textures over colours if that makes any sense at all. In a previous video I spoke briefly about uh, learning how to paint textures from photo texturing that's not always necessary. I didn't use any photo texturing in this painting. I also don't believe I used any uh, of the skills that I've learned from photo texturing, except for maybe the the wooden grain. But what I did do was to take some, a lot of the brushes and things that I have and fiddle around with the presets and see whether I could find any way of using them to create those textures quickly and easily uh, without having to go in and detail it all by hand or use photo textures uh, as, as I mentioned. This came in particularly handy with the brick wall. Obviously this was a very large area and I was able to detail out some of it by hand but a lot of it was going to be a lot more, uh, a lot trickier. So uh, one of the first things I did is I used a various splatter brushes to create lots of different color, color variation going on within the wall itself uh, and then blurred it and pixelated and did, did all sorts of things to try and hide the fact that it was just kind of a blotchy wall texture. But then later on towards the end I went back over with another brush, like a stipple brush, and was able to turn that layer into a multiply layer and copy it, create a second layer on top and just slightly offset it using a uh, coloured dodge layer. And those two together created a sense of depth 
to the wall towards both the the mortar between the bricks and the bricks themselves suddenly had a lot more texture to them uh, and that was a very quick process maybe it took me about 30 seconds and I was able to texture the whole wall it's not the perfect texture job in the world uh, and certainly if you zoom in on the picture you'll be able to see that it's not ideal but it definitely gets the impression of texture on the wall across which is really what I wanted at the end of the day That's one of the wonderful things about digital paintings is that there are shortcuts to things. If I'd gone through and tried to detail everything by hand, this painting would still be being done. As a result, it took 17 hours as it is, which is a long time, but it would have taken me far, far longer had I tried to detail everything by hand. It's not a cost-effective way of using your time. It's much better if you if you know a shortcut, if you can find a shortcut to try and to get the same kind of result that you're looking for. Try it. Try it and see whether it works. If it doesn't, then you can always go back another way. That's the wonderful thing about digital art. You press Ctrl Z, you, you can go back and start again without losing any time whatsoever. Anyway guys, I think we're coming towards the end of this video, so thank you very much for watching, sticking through with me until the end. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please make sure that you hit a like button down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please leave me a comment down below uh, letting me know what you think first of all of the painting. Uh, also, your ideas, your thoughts about the Joker himself and the various interpretations of him there have been over the years. Also if you have any thoughts on characters you'd like to see me paint and discuss in the future please also leave them down below uh, in the comment section or tweet them at me the link to that is also down in the description. And finally I will say I do have a Twitch account where I do do uh, semi-regular live streams of an arty variety so the link to that is also going to be down in the description below. Uh, do come and uh, join me over there if you would like to join me painting live. Once again guys thank you very much for sticking with me and I will see you in the next video.